Hey everybody, this is my 55 gallon angelfish tank and recently I lost several fish in here overnight due to an oxygen crash. Uh, at the time I wasn't sure what happened, I thought maybe some thing happened, some singular event or some sort of catastrophe with the water chemistry, I was really baffled by it. And it didn't take me too long of uh, sitting and thinking about it. Uh, before I sort of figured out what had happened and the first thing I came to realize was that it was not so overnight as I first thought. Uh, what it really boils down to is user error, I'll say to put it politely, but it was just my fault. It was neglect, uh, you know, to put it bluntly. And I say that because I understand enough about oxygen um, you know, gas exchange and oxygen usage in the tank and so on and so forth. And I really just sort of took for granted that the uh, tank was going to just keep ticking over like it always had. Uh, we're probably going to be distracted. I got my angel fishing here. I may as well just go over here and just point the camera at them. Um, they've been acting up all night. The albino is the male. The long fin in the back is the female. They're a pair. And then this is the rival male in the tank here, this German blue. So there's your soap opera scenario while I explain what happened in this tank. So first of all, how do we get oxygen in the tank? How do we get carbon dioxide out? It's called gas exchange. It happens at the surface. Even if you have an air stone in the tank, and there is some debate about this. Some people insist that the air itself puts... Um, you know, is responsible for gas exchange, and other people say that it is simply the water it's carrying to the surface, which gives you your gas exchange at the surface, and it's not the actual bubbles themselves. Uh, I've heard both, and I'm not going to get into a video about that right now. Suffice it to say that either way you slice it, having an air stone in the tank is the most effective way to facilitate gas exchange. So if you want a nice good balanced tank, an air stone is your way to go. For me however, I really don't like bubbles in tanks. I really really don't like bubbles in tanks and I've never had air stones in any of my tanks. Well, I have and that's why I know I don't like them. I just have set my tanks up so I don't need to. The way I've set them up is with lots of water circulation and that lots of water circulation is what gives me my gas exchange at the surface so in the bottom left hand corner you can see it now is a power head and at the time I had a 425 gallon per hour power head which seemed like a lot when I first set this tank up and I also had um, the 525 gallon per hour nominal circulation from my filter system here, my Sun Sun canister filter. Now you can see I've rearranged it a little bit. I used to have it turned around the other way so the holes were facing sort of back and down and it, it blew down the glass and, and swirled across the bottom. And then this very first section here actually pointed upwards and that gave me just a little bit of rippling on the surface. I won't even go so far as to call it surface agitation. I'll call it rippling on the surface. So I've since rolled the bar over and I've got more rippling on the surface. Again, that's, that's borderline what I would think of as surface agitation necessarily, but it does help. Um, if you think about the ripples in the waves, you're actually creating more surface area. You're spreading out the surface area. So while it's not gurgling and splashing, I am actually increasing the overall surface area where gas exchange can happen by doing that. So what happened before was just a slow reduction in all of those things. My power head was sort of getting, you know, gummed up, not necessarily spinning fast enough, but the algae was growing on it, and just over time it just wasn't moving as much water. The tank has really, really grown in. The vegetation has gotten very, very thick, again, blocking a lot of the water movement. The filter's getting older. Its internal workings are starting to slow down, so it wasn't moving as much water as had been, you know, previously been moving around the tank. And then what was really going on, and this is where my neglect came in, if I looked at the surface, the water sprite that you can see in the corner there had grown 
almost all the way across. I mean, we were talking about halfway across my spray bar here, and it had cyanobacteria growing on it, and it had this sort of scummy mat that more or less covered the surface of the tank from, you know, two-thirds of the way down this way. I also, as I mentioned, had very little in the way of surface agitation, and for some reason my... Uh, surface skimmer there never wants to float in this tank and it really doesn't draw much water through it even when it does it's kind of useless for some reason never quite figured that out um, but it was set up the way it is right now which does absolutely nothing for skimming the surface and what had happened was I had developed a thick uh, film of that biofilm you get on a tank so my the surface of my tank was completely covered with some sort of film whether it was the biofilm or the cyanobacteria or the physical plant themselves i was really just not allowing any room for gas exchange even if i had had good circulation which i had you know modest circulation if the if the if the surface was clear it would have been okay but under the circumstances it really wasn't and I had noticed for a few days I had been watching this male angelfish right here. When I came down to turn the lights on in the morning, I was even going to shoot a video about it because I thought it was really odd. I've had this fish for several years, and I thought, you know, how come I've never noticed this before? When I was turning the lights on in the morning, it was lying on the bottom like it was dead. Not on its side or anything. It still looked like it was sleeping, sort of nose down the way they do. But it just took forever for it to wake up. I mean, minutes after the lights would come on, its fins would start moving real slowly. If I went over and agitated, you know, like waved my hand around in the glass in front of it, I'd get a little bit of movement. And it just really seemed to take a long time. And I was sort of jokingly thinking about, like, boy, he's not a morning person, is he? And at the same time, I was sort of ignoring the little alarm bells, like, I've never noticed this behavior before. Why am I just noticing this now? He's never acted so sluggish in the morning. And I just kept dismissing it, and I kept writing it off. And that is a huge mistake. If you've got some kind of alarm bell going off, if you're noticing some sort of behavior that's unusual that you've never seen in your fish before, pay attention to it. And I didn't. And I also noticed... The night before I had gone to bed, you know, and, and the night before the, the, the big crash and everybody died, I noticed that all of these Serpe Tetras over here were swimming around near the surface, like very much near the surface, as though they were trying to skim food off the surface. Uh, Squeaker's going to come down and join us now. So... I, again, kind of thought it was a little unusual. I know even when they get hungry, if we come over here close to the glass, they often will start swimming around and getting excited because they think food's coming. But they don't hover around the surface like they're skimming the surface with open mouths. And they were very clearly gasping for oxygen. And even as close as... Meow, we hear you. Even as close to the surface as they were they still really weren't getting a lot of oxygen because the surface was completely covered with biofilm and that simply blocks the gas exchange from happening. So while I did have, you know, other stuff going on, I had the worms in the tank uh, that had all come out onto the glass, they weren't causal to the problem, they were because of the problem, they were a result. The oxygen in the tank was so low and the water circulation had gotten so bad that we were seeing them come out on the morning of the disaster. And then of course since then I've done a water change, I've got the surface clear, we've got nice uh, clear water now. I doubled the size of the power head in there and I even worked on the filter to get it to flow a little better. And I haven't had any issues since in the mornings when the lights come on, everybody's up and ready to go as soon as the lights flick on. And, you know, that's it. It was simple as that. I just sort of ignored all the warning signs. I let the tank sort of get overgrown. I let the maintenance slack. And I paid the price. That's what happens when you just kind of slack off a little too much. And, you know, even if I had just gotten in there and sort of done, a little, you know, taken a, a cup and a bucket and just skimmed the surface to get some of that scum off the surface, I would have been probably okay. If I just pulled some of that plant out of there, there was anything, a uh, number of things I could have done that would have been very easy to do. Would have taken a few moments, 
and then that would have been that. And I kept just sort of ignoring the warning signs and I kept sort of putting off the water change. I knew I needed to do it. I knew I needed to get in there and clean those plants up. I knew I needed to get in and, you know, I could tell the surface was all scummy. I could tell when I went in there and opened the lid to feed them that it needed to be cleaned. And I just kept putting it off and putting it off and that's it. You know, it was just completely my fault. That was just neglect. So there you have it. I really don't know what else to tell you uh, other than, you know, learn a lesson from my mistakes. If you see something unusual, if you see your fish behaving in a way that you've never seen it behaving before, pay attention to it. Wonder what it's doing. And in my case, I knew, you know, I can, I know when fish are hovering near the surface that they're starving for oxygen. So that was no real big confusing thing for me, but it was still something I ignored, you know, and I paid the price for it. So thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful to somebody. Hope that solved a mystery if anybody's wondering about whatever happened. So make sure you're subscribed. We get plenty more coming up. I got lots of stuff I'm actually working on right now. You don't want to miss any of that. Thanks again. See you real soon in the next one.